Warning. The following animation depicts a photorealistic thermonuclear exchange between the United States and Russia. It involves multiple high-yield thermonuclear detonations over large population centers. As a result, some viewers may find the following nine minutes deeply distressing. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. This is the LG M118MX Peacekeeper, a four-stage intercontinental ballistic missile with one of the most complex and accurate guidance systems known to man. It's the deadliest intercontinental ballistic missile ever deployed by the United States Air Force and is single-handedly credited for ending the Cold War between the United States and Russia at the end of the 20th century. The missile stands at a massive height of 71 feet and has a fuselage diameter of 7 feet 8 inches. The fuselage was built using thin sheet steel and altogether it weighed a massive 193,460 pounds. The Peacekeeper consists of three major sections. The boost section, the post-boost vehicle section and the re-entry vehicle section. The top section of the Peacekeeper is the re-entry vehicle system. It consists of a protective shroud which protects the re-entry vehicles during ascent. It is topped with a nose cap containing a rocket motor to separate it from the deployment module during its launch sequence. The Peacekeeper was the United States' deadliest intercontinental ballistic missile in America's nuclear arsenal for one simple reason. The missile carried not one, not two, not three, but ten Avco Mark 21 re-entry vehicles, each carrying 10 300 kiloton W87 thermonuclear warheads. Altogether, the missile was 400 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945. The Peacekeeper was the first US ICBM to use cold launch technology. The missile was placed inside a canister and loaded into the launch facility. When launched, high pressure steam ejects the canister from the launch silo to an altitude of 300 feet. Once the missile clears the silo, its shock absorbing pads are ejected from its surface. And the first stage motor ignites. The missile performs its first pitch maneuver of around 20 degrees sending the missile on its course to the enemy. The first stage rocket booster, manufactured by Theocol, weighs a total of 108,000 pounds, stood 28 feet tall and was 7 feet 8 inches wide in diameter. The motor case is made of a highly resilient Kevlar epoxy material. Inside, the first stage is a thin layer of insulation, followed by the solid fuel rocket propellant. Near the top of the propellant is the igniter, which sets off the rocket's launch. The cylindrical hole in the propellant acts as a combustion chamber. The solid propellant fuel used in the first three stages of the Peacekeeper missile relies on acrylic acid aluminum powder for fuel combined with ammonium perchlorate as the oxidizer and polybutadiene as the binder. Once the booster is ignited, the solid propellant cannot be extinguished and it burns until it is depleted. The Theocol first stage solid rocket booster produces a total of 200,400 pounds of thrust, allowing the Peacekeeper to reach an altitude of 75,000 feet or 14 miles into the Earth's upper troposphere. After the first stage motor expends its fuel, an explosive charge in the first interstage detonates, separating the first stage from the missile and the second stage motor ignites. The 18 foot long second stage motor, manufactured by Aerojet, weighed 60,000 pounds and propelled the missile to an altitude of 190,000 feet. At T plus 75 seconds, under direction from the missile's guidance system, the second stage motor begins its second roll maneuver towards its target, the capital of Russia. The Peacekeeper's guidance system is perhaps one of the most lethally precise advanced weapon systems ever created. 
codenamed the Advanced Inertial Reference Sphere, or AIRS, the Peacekeeper's Missile Guidance Set, is a fluid-suspended gyro-stabilized platform, as opposed to one using a far less advanced gimbaled platform. Like the Minuteman 3, it consists of a beryllium sphere floating in liquid. Jet nozzles are used to stabilize the inertial platform, as commanded from the sensors to increase accuracy. This design not only eliminates the problem of gimbal lock, but also makes it extremely accurate, allowing each of its 10 300 kiloton thermonuclear warheads to possess a circular error probability of detonating no less than 130 feet from their target, virtually guaranteeing the complete destruction of America's enemies in less than 30 minutes after launch. Although originally intended for precision strikes against hardened Russian nuclear missile silos, the AIRS system proved to be even more lethal when targeting high population centers. At T plus 120 seconds, the second stage motor is jettisoned and the third stage motor ignites. Five seconds later, at an altitude of 200,000 feet, the rocket motor in the Peacekeeper's nose cap ignites, separating it from the deployment module. Given the complexity of the missile guidance system and the post-boost vehicle of the Minuteman missile, things are only going to be that much more complex when developing a warhead delivery system capable of delivering 10 warheads on a Peacekeeper missile. Like the Minuteman 3, the Peacekeeper's post-boost system carried liquid propellants to help steer the missile. The post-boost vehicle is comprised of a metallic internal structure wrapped in aluminum isogrid skin. Inside is a gas storage assembly, a gimbal axial engine, two propellant storage tanks containing a hypergolic mixture of nitrogen tetroxide as the oxidizing agent and monomethyl hydrazine as the fuel and a total of 12 altitude-controlled engines, all of which are interconnected to the propellant manifold and single nozzle that provides thrust. At T plus 180 seconds, the post-boost vehicle activates its Ordnance Firing Unit detonation charges, releasing the third stage motor from the missile. After the third stage booster has been jettisoned, the post-boost vehicle begins its flight over Western Europe toward its final destination. The deployment module provides structural support for the Peacekeeper's 10 thermal nuclear warheads and carries the electronics needed to activate and deploy them. The vehicles are covered with material that protect the warheads during their re-entry through the atmosphere and are mechanically attached to the deployment module. The attachments are unlatched by gas pressure from an explosive cartridge broken by small exploding bolts which free the re-entry vehicles allowing them to separate from the deployment module with minimum disturbance. Afterwards, each deployed nuclear warhead follows a ballistic path to its target.